we need to find people. This also goes back to the education. Like everything's interconnected, the NGOs and education, which we will get to in a second. But like we need to find Haitian, well-deserving Haitian young people to send abroad and you know and become educated and become doctors so they can benefit their own society, so they can be a figure in their own public. Um, one of them was that a suggestion of where is this trash going? We wanted to suggest how possibly having a side, um, a place set aside like a dump for the trash to go to reduce the amount of trash that is burned, which is a, a, probably not a good practice either. Um, and then make sure that it's also contained. So just um, reducing the amount of waste like in the street. Uh, and then we thought with education beyond just like schools and stuff, we really did like public awareness campaigns. Because we talked about how like the HIV campaign there was really successful. So we wanted to do other stuff like that, but um, with like sanitation and health, importance of education and nutrition and things like that just could be really effective. Well, the four kind of main topics that we addressed were food, water, shelter, and clearing rubble. And we, starting with the food, um, we, we kind of categorized each into sh immediate and sh uh, long-term solutions to each of those issues. So for food, the immediate ish, uh, solution would be the ready-to-use therapeutic food, which is very easily accessible to adults, children, and elderly people. And it could also kind of supplement their um, diets in addition to kind of corn and rice, which are two crops which are kind of easily, more easily grown in Haiti than in um, other, I don't know, products. And then the long term is um, creating sustainable farming and education for farming. So uh, educating kids in school about farming and creating multi-generational farming families that have a knowledge of the land but also a knowledge of the technology um, with which they can kind of have the most crops. And um, for water, the immediate solution would be um, portable uh, purification kind of tactics and so one that we researched was called SOTUS and it's solar water disinfection um, and it provides, it, it's basically just putting it in a plastic bottle and putting it in the water in the sun and that can purify the water relatively well considering that it is of no cost other than that of the bottles and um, long term definitely sewage systems and um, just cleaning up trash is key to kind of creating clean river structures and also creating communities that are centered around water to reduce the amount of transportation that they need to take to get to the water um, for shelter. Immediate would be tents and to provide, as opposed to just the ten, ten cities that they have now which are uh, not clean and really promote the spread of disease, um, to give each tent like a yard around it, just like you know five feet of square land around it and then each that way each family has their own place to call home and their kind of their own space which they keep clean and they keep safe and um, just to set rules for each of these to just spread people out and set rules and make sure that the communities the tent communities are watched more closely because that way they will be safer and they will be cleaner and people will be able to kind of not have to worry about their safety and that way they can go out and maybe find jobs or just help other people who need help. The long term is, you know, idealistically creating potentially sustainable or green housing, but also kind of on a broad spectrum because a lot of people need the housing. And so the, the, the problem with that would be creating low cost housing for lots of people, but not having it be mass housing. And so um, just creating more structured communities with community leaders, people who are you know, Haitians and know the area and know the people who typically have lived in that region and they can organize and kind of motivate the residents to want to, you know, create these safe environments and, um, you know, the possibilities with starting from basically ground zero is being able to use technology and advanced techniques that are a little bit ahead of what we would be able to implement other places. but. The problem with that would be funding, and would people be willing to test kind of their technologies in the Haiti, in Haiti? Um, lastly, we have clearing rubble, and immediately, obviously, clearing rubble is an issue. One thing that was mentioned at the conference was the um, land ownership issues and the destruction of legal documents, which is a problem because people aren't able to clear rubble if it's not their land. And I think one of those solutions to that would be to give 
the land, like to give land to people who clear the rubble off of it. So say if you clean this, you know, half acre, then you get to keep it. Or if you keep, you know, clean this and you get to keep half of it and we'll use the rest to create kind of a community center. And um, to help organize that, you could register members of each tent community. And then that way there would be an organized list of people and kind of creating new government documents. And that way to be able to not track people, but just make sure that people got what they deserved. And long term is um, reusing the rubble to create roads, infrastructure, and make sure that the buildings that are built are up to standard and are either earthquake resistant or earthquake tolerant. I know there's a difference between these two. I'm not really sure what it is, but just make sure that there are codes so that were there to be another earthquake, the amount of destruction would not be so vast.